Look, from low power, it might not look very exciting here. The, here's the epidermis down here. There's not much inflammation or anything. The only thing you really can see is these really dilated vessels here that are filled with either blood or fibrin thrombus. Hard to tell at low power. When you go closer, look what's happening. There is blood, there is fibrin, there's clot here. But look at all of these things. What are those? Yeah, bad news is what those are. Those are fungal hyphae growing out of the blood vessel, the, the dilated congested vessel that's filled with thrombus mixed with fungal hyphae, and the hyphae are growing through the vessel wall. So this is angio-invasive fungus. This is basically metastatic fungus, if you like to think of it that way. Probably they have a nodule in the lung or somewhere else. One of my early autopsies I did was a transplant patient that had just tons of aspergillus, which is what this is in this case, in the lung, and then had some of it go into the vessel in the lung, spread to the GI tract, and then it rode its way in, and then the patient died from bleeding out into the GI tract. But it was a really, a really a terrible case for that poor patient, but a really good example of exactly how these fungi operate. Once your immune system is broken down and you get a nidus of this growing inside your body, it gets into the bloodstream, and then it can spread all over the place. So this will show up as purple or black um, areas of ischemic necrosis in the skin that eventually ulcerate and turn into eschars. And then when you biopsy, what you're going to look for is the, the vessel. So anytime you have one of those things where the, the vessels are blocked off by clot, by thrombus, always think about, could it be angioinvasive fungus that's causing the clot, okay? It's important to learn to recognize ischemic changes in the skin, like you showed earlier, I think, with one of your cases, recognizing ischemic change and then looking what's wrong with the vessels. Is it because there's cryoglobulin? Is it because there's thrombi from DIC or HUS? Is it because there's fungal hyphae invading the vessels? Is it because there's calciphylaxis? Those are always important things. Once you recognize ischemic change in the skin, you have to figure out why that's there because a lot of those things are really urgent, acute things that need to be, they're basically uh, derm emergencies. All right. So a lot of times, you're, if you're lucky, you'll see the hyphae staining on the H and E, um, even without doing the stain. But I'll, if I have any suspicion, I'll do the stain. And these tend to be in immunocompromised patients, so it's not surprising that if this were in any of us, we would have a load of inflammatory response here. But in these patients, they are wiped out and they have no immune response. So it's often very pink or red appearance from low power because you'll see blood and hemorrhage and fibrin and no inflammatory response. And also once the skin gets ischemic, it looks even more pink, even less purple. So it often has a very pink wiped out kind of appearance to me um, and very little inflammatory response in the setting of, and there are multiple other vessels in here with that same finding. So again, you don't call this aspergillosis unless there's a culture. You can say angioinvasive fungus and that there's septate and acute angle branching, but uh, we actually have, there's a paper from American Journal of Clinical Pathology, I think 2010, um, that, has, that has a real nice, um, uh, evidence showing that you cannot reliably speciate fungi. Sometimes you're going to be right, but you're going to be wrong sometimes too. So we actually cite that in our reports so that our clinical team, when they call, they're like, but, but just tell us, what do you think it is? Come on. And, and so I took, did one time and I said, well, it looks like it's probably mucor actually. No, it was aspergillus niger once they cultured it. The patient had been treated with amphotericin, which can more, um, cause the fungal morphology to change. So all those classic descriptions are based on, on cultured microbiology dishes and not on tissue, basically. So you have to be real careful with that. And don't, don't get bullied into trying to be a, a culture dish. Just tell them to do, or tell them to do PCR. We do that sometimes too. Okay, so in this case, it was aspergillosis, but remember that fusarium and other species can have identical morphologic appearance.